Das sind wirklich Bedingungen, wo man so ein bisschen mit angespannten Nerven segelt, weil man weiß, das Segel könnte abreißen. This accident happened just after we had like a super nice moment with the crew. The, the skin was like shrinking. I knew it was not a nice burn. I'm not such a squeamish person, but it didn't look ideal. Man ist natürlich mit dem Messer zwischen den Zähnen in diesem Rennmodus. I switched off my phone. Okay, guys, I'm offline. Good luck, everyone in your own life. I focused on the race and uh, on sailing. Wir hatten Böen bis 55 Knoten, schon Orkanstärke. Das sind wirklich Bedingungen, wo man so ein bisschen mit angespannten Nerven segelt, weil man weiß, das Segel könnte abreißen. Bang, dann explodiert das einfach. Das ist kind of the most intense racing we've done as a crew so far. malade là depuis euh, peut-être 36 heures. C'est vraiment l'enfer là, on vient de se taper euh, oh, à peu près là, 50 nœuds. Ça tape. <rire> yeah, Antoine was pretty bad. <rire> And I felt so sorry for him too. He came and watched and threw up again and tried to edit again, threw up again and then went back in the bunk. So yeah, my fluid inside were just like unbalanced. You know, when you're normally expecting to go on your off watch for, for a nice uh, couple of hours of sleep, you're finding that you're being woken up every half an hour. And it's very physical, you know, you're, it means you're trying to grab 20 minutes of sleep, but when your heart rate's up at about 160, so, you know, imagine trying to go to sleep 60 seconds after going running. Wenden und Halsen sind die beiden grundsätzlichen Manöver. Wenn wir uns jetzt vorstellen, dass der Wind hier von oben kommt und ich will von hier nach da segeln, dann muss ich kreuzen, aufkreuzen gegen den Wind. Ein Boot kann nicht genau gegen den Wind segeln. Und bei diesem Zickzack in jeder Ecke äh, wende ich. Wenn ich jetzt von hier oben zurückfahren will nach unten, dann fahre ich wieder Zickzack äh, und 
fahre jedes Mal nach Hause. In der Mitte vom Boot gibt es den Coffee Grinder, eine Winchkurbel. Innen drin ist eine, eine Fahrradkette und wir können mit kleinen Hebelleinenzügen können wir auswählen, welche der Winchen sich drehen soll. All the lines from the mast, from, from the deck and from all the sheets is all coming together in this cockpit and on the winches. And that's how you can trim on sails or to hoist sails. Unser Alltag an dem Bord besteht damit, diese Kurbel zu drehen eigentlich. You need some wind to move the boat, obviously, but not too much because then you start to break everything and you have to slow down. You also have to look at the sea state, you also have to look at the wind direction because with some direction the boat can be faster on other wind direction. You look at the current and also you look at, the, at your competitors because maybe you don't want to, to be alone on, because if it's a mistake then you are going to lose everything. live like students, don't we? Yeah. We just cook rice and and uh, ready-made meals. The rice is a bit undercooked. <laughs> but it's okay, I'm sure. Ah, yeah. Need a bit of this. Routine is uh, sailing, eating, shitting, and sleeping, and in that <laughs> in, in that order, just easy life. You you just do your thing, and huh? that's it. Sleep well. Okay, I think we're on. We're recording. I feel like I'm working for the McDonald's with this thing. Hello. Two Big Macs in a Mac Tasty. Until now I didn't really properly eat. I just had a little bit of saucisson with a little bit of ham. As you might see, it's a little bit bumpy. Woo. It's day number three and um, we just went through Gibraltar Strait. We're quite happy now because we're heading south and uh, and that means that we're going in the right direction towards Cabo Verde, which is uh, our first stop. Uh, I was a bit seasick too and uh, I was not very talkative and I think a lot uh, what happened uh, just went past me. We just had a sail change and I'm trying to dry up a little bit. My hair is so wet. Full speed right now. The boat is unbelievably noisy. It's just screaming through the waves and uh, yeah, it feels good to finally be doing this. Let's not put too much pressure. Uh, we, we do what we can. We push the boat. We push ourselves and, uh, and that's what we do now. I'm Holly Kova. I am 33 years old and I'm the team director of Team Malaysia. 
Yeah. You had carnival starting yesterday or something, no? Uh, they start warming it up. Uh, the Mandinga dressed up in uh, all black oil decoration uh, for the... Uh, and then they go to the beach. After they finish, they go and wash the, the paint off. Cape Verde is a very peaceful place. Uh, nice people. There's a good vibe. You have 365 days of sun. Uh, paradise. We do a big me, YouTube series. You guys gonna put me on the YouTube? Yeah. <laughs> it's super nice. It's a beautiful island. <laughs> As you can see, we're just sending it through the trade winds. It's uh, it's going fairly well. We managed to gain a few miles on the uh, on the front two boats. Uh, at the moment, we're sailing 30 knots. Um, it's way more comfy. Uh, actually, I'm on a point that I think, wow, uh, I'm really enjoying it. Trying to get used to the food is probably the, one of the main things. Beating out a bag the whole time is uh, is a bit of fun. I'm eating beef potato hot pot with pine nuts. And we're learning more and more about the boat the whole time, especially with these new foils. We're trying to be really careful with not breaking them because uh, that's the last thing we want to do is go and break the pair of foils. The vibe is very good on board. Um, today we had a very lovely moment with um, some pirate music and uh, we were dancing in the cockpit, making fun with each other, we're laughing and um, I think it's important to, to do these kind of things. But what, do you know what's in here? I have no idea. This is called the Batten for Nature. And uh, Team Alicia is carrying it on leg one. So every leg, like, a different team will carry this around the world, promoting the whole idea about the universal rights for ocean, of the oceans. There's actually nothing in there. What will happen if I open the bottom? Oh, <laughs> we're not going to do that. We leave it a secret. Yeah. This accident happened just after we had like a super nice moment with the crew. Boris decided to, to, to cook some dinner and uh, the pot fell over with boiling water and it hit his feet and well, we all could see the, 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 the skin was like shrinking. And Boris at that point he said, oh, I feel nothing, I feel nothing. And then I knew, oh, okay, that's bad if you feel nothing. The, the meisten Unfälle passieren ja im Haushalt und sowas hier auch. Es war jetzt nicht der, das äh, große äh, Naturdrama, die Welle, der Sturm oder sonst was. Es war einfach ein Unfall im Haushalt. I saw the moment and I was a bit scared because I could see directly the skin like out of his foot and it was a little bit like really pink. So I knew it was not a nice burn. Boris is typing at the moment. Like this. Looks pretty painful. It's just one of those shitty accidents which you just hope never happens, you know? Um, and yeah. Team Malizia, welcome to King My feeling on the arrival was 
um, elation. Very happy that we proved ourselves. We sail in a conservative way, uh, especially in the strong wind, and then we are able to slowly, slowly start to push a bit the boat. Especially uh, downwind condition with, uh, with these foils was a uh, very, yeah, surprising how fast we were going. Ankommen uh, war das Schöne an der Etappe. This is Boris. Hi. Just arrived in Cape Verde. It looked better yesterday. It's always better the day it happens. Yeah. I normally never hurt myself. No. The uh, Cape Verde Hospital is a very interesting experience. Boris is there, like, we get seen super fast, but no one speaks English. I'm a doctor, I'm a doctor, sales, plastic surgeon. Mm -hmm. Que horas? Que horas que você comeu? What time did you eat? Four hours ago. Four hours ago. Yeah. Drink or drink, drink some water, and I eat some muesli. Okay. Você tem alguma restrição com medicamentos? Do you have any restrictions, no. son? No. No. Vamos fazer. Vamos fazer o seu curativo na outro local, no bloco cirúrgico. Let's do your bandage on the uterus. <laughs> Up there. Okay. You understand? Okay, perfect. Hence translation said we will do the bandage on your uterus. Ah. Ja, um momento. Weil es war eine sehr skurrile Situation im Krankenhaus ähm, dort eigentlich nicht so richtig zu wissen, was wollen sie machen, warum. Katheter, no, I don't need that. For what? The doctor said you need. For what? They want to put something in the veins. And they have a catheter? Yes. Why? So first I want someone who can translate. Uh, we are in a sailing race, so I don't I need to know your plan, what medics you want to... Il faut que je sache qu'est-ce que vous voulez faire. Yeah, it got more and more kind of dramatic, I guess, serious. I mean, the doctors are really good, it's just we couldn't understand each other. And they're not understanding that we can't really understand. Yeah, well, I'm here with Boris and we're just at the doctors um, in Cape Verde and Boris just wants to speak to you quickly. Yeah. Hi Spike, thank you. Yes, okay, fine, thanks. They cannot speak to us, so I was just trying to ask you what would one yeah, what would one normally do and then I can see if that matches. <laughs> they want to cut the skin, yeah, that's okay. what I understood. Like I'm not such a squeamish person, but it didn't look ideal. They, they said like, oh, this will be quite painful when we, and he made the hand sign that he's gonna rub on it. Yeah, we spoke to the um, doctor, uh, like through the phone. You had a, a look at the picture? Yeah, it doesn't look quite as nice and clean as it did uh, yesterday evening. Yeah. That's the thing with burns. Um, you know, they tend to get worse before they start getting better. So, <laughs> should, should I just then put myself in their, um, their command and let them do whatever they want to do, or should I be a bit suspicious about it? I think you should just put, them in, 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 put, put yourself in their hands. Burns will be something that they see uh, relatively uh, often. Um, so they'll be they'll have their own way of managing them and, and their own and, and that's probably going to be reasonably good good super good spike thank you right okay he'll, he said just whatever you suggest we should do as it's a bit makes you a bit insecure if you cannot speak to the doctor yeah, yeah for sure is. also i always tend to know better everything so <laughs> it's the other problem well, when i did my medical course <laughs> <laughs> Yes, is it correct? Break au brigada. Und dann wurde ich irgendwann in den OP-Bereich gebracht. Bon dia. 
Und da durften dann meine Begleitung nicht mehr mitkommen. Okay, yeah. in the block now. Dann ging es erst richtig los. Und dann haben sie mir alles weggenommen, alle Kleidung. Und dann hielt ich mich noch so nackt am Handy fest. Und dann so, mm -mm, das Handy musst du auch abgeben. Und dann kam ich in so einen Raum, der wirklich wie so ein, wie so ein keine Ahnung, der, der Messerraum. Ja. Hallo, von der. Und da ist dann so ein abgewetzter Holzschemel, auf den haben sie mich dann raufgelegt und dann kamen sie mit so Verlängerungen an beiden Seiten, die sie so angeschraubt haben, so starke, tätowierte Typen, die auch sehr ein bisschen furchteinflößend waren. Das waren auch so eher die Messertypen, würde ich sagen. Und dann haben sie meine Arme auf diese Dinge schnallen wollen. Das wollte ich überhaupt nicht. Dann haben sie auch schon meine Blicke gemerkt, wie ich so, äh, hier bitte nicht. So. Und ich, da dachte ich, in dem Moment dachte ich so, hm, vielleicht gehe ich einfach. Ähm, dann machen wir das einfach selber. Ich nehme eine Nagelschere, schneide ein bisschen Haut weg. So. I think it's probably good not to do the next leg because to me the biggest, most important one is uh, is the Southern Ocean and I think, I mean, he's going to be fine but if that gets infected, like just on your foot, in the water, in the boots, like on the boat, I think that the chances of infection are way higher, like way, way higher. I was waiting outside for him patiently for I think three hours in total. We're friends and seeing your friend hurt, like, yeah, it's an emotional thing. It's like, I shouldn't have left him alone, you know? Okay. I was thinking he was going to be like sat in a chair, like reading his phone or something. I don't know, awake. Oh, sorry. <laughs> When I saw him in the bed, like unconscious, and fully like in a gown and all these other sick people around, I was like, and I was thinking like, oh my God, I've like killed Boris. You're all good, don't worry. How are you feeling? Good. First we just thought it's going to be general anaesthetic and then they just knocked him full out. So it was a little bit of a surprise. The first thing I was like, spoke to him and like, he was like, I'm good. I was like, okay, <laughs> cool. Because I've never seen him like, not strong. Is it now quarter past 12? Yes. Quarter past 12. We're not missing our meeting. <laughs> That's tonight at six. You're good. <laughs> you have a very beautiful hair net on. <laughs> He just gave me a switch injection. <laughs> And then, uh, I don't remember anything. Wow. Und dann bin ich da dann aufgewacht mit einem verbundenen Fuß. That is a bandage. I wonder if they scrapped up half, the, scrapped away half the foot. <laughs> yes. Okay, thank you so much. Not too obrigada. obrigada. I honestly thought that this stopover was going to be like easy, but I was very wrong. Hi guys, I'm Boris Herman. Join me and the team around the world on the Ocean Race and become a Malizian. <laughs>